as you add in services to the mesh, one thing important is to make sure your service continue function, right? So we want to make sure we can still hit the Istio ingress gateway on port 443 and the traffic continue to flow. Let's spend a minute to understand what actually happens. So if you took, take a look at the pod information for the web API pod uh, in the Istio in action namespace, you can see uh, it's a little bit long, but uh, you can see it has one init container, which uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, so it has one init container, which called, uh, which calls, um, it's using this uh, proxy v2 image, and it runs Istio IP tables command uh, to config the IP table for inbound and outbound uh, capture. So that's the purpose of the unit container. It sets up the IP table configuration and it finishes. And then the Istio proxy, sidecar proxy and the web API container would run in parallel. So uh, this is the Istio proxy container. It's using the same proxy image as Istio init. It has a bunch of environment variables, uh, a little bit of more internal Istio configuration, but you can see it's configured as the sidecar mode with uh, like the cluster name and the domain, and you can configure like, tracing, concurrency, all that information is configurable. And this is the web API container that uh, spinned off the web API deployment YAML we just looked at earlier. So we talk about Istio init container, we talk about the arguments for the init container. Um, and the one thing I want to show you is if you're interested, this is getting a little bit advanced. If you're interested in the uh, Istio IP tables uh, command uh, from the pilot agent, you can actually um, understand like some of the configuration I showed you early on, right? Like dash D, for example, right? Dash B, dash I, dash U, what these means. So they actually have really good explanation here. Um, for example, let's figure out what dash D means uh, from the tooling here. So it means exclude ports, right? So why are we excluding these three ports? Because um, some of these ports are we, we don't want our way to capture, for example, health check ports, right? We don't want to go through mutual TRS to do health check. Um, so these are the ports we purposefully config the sidecar proxy to exclude from the capture. So feel free to poke around uh, if you're really curious about how this command works and what these commands means, um, they are available for you. Um, the, the next thing we want to talk about is uh, the Istio proxy container, right? So we talk about the proxy container is using the proxy uh, v2 image, same as the init container, and it configs uh, these three ports for the exclude list for, uh, from, the, from the inbound capture. Um, so apparently, uh, yeah, 15090 is the one that emits uh, traffic to premises, and 15020 is the premises, uh, merge premises metrics. So these metrics we're excluding from capture. I believe R21 is the health check port. Um, so if you go back to the Istio proxy configuration, um, notice that we also mounted a couple of volumes. Um, so for instance, Istio CA cert, uh, root cert, uh, one of the certs uh, that's mounted. Um, also there is a Istio token uh, that's also mounted uh, to the sidecar proxy. So why do we do that? Um, because uh, we need these for 
to bootstrap the sidecar proxy. So the sidecar proxy can establish a certificate signing request with Istio control plan so that it can get uh, the necessary key answers uh, signed for the sidecar proxy to communicate with the rest of the services in the mesh. Uh, with that, we're going to add more services to the mesh. Um, so we're going to add uh, recommendation, purchase history, and sleep uh, to the mesh by rolling restart the deployment. Now, if you go get the parts for Istio in action, you can see, you know, uh, things are being picked up with the sidecar proxy and the, the old parts are being terminated. So, we're going to continue to uh, curl the web API through Istio Ingress Gateway, just making sure as we add services to the mesh, we're not breaking any of our existing traffic. So what have you gained, right? You added sidecar, right? It's going to come a cost to you, right? Those sidecar proxy does take a little bit of memory, a little bit of CPU, right? It requires you extra effort. So what have you gained? Um, to do that, we're going to, notice we have two terminals here now. Well, so we're going to work with both of the terminals. Um, so we're going to first put a loop, right, for that command uh, to access Web API. We're going to put a little bit of loop to generate some traffic. And then on the second, Terminal 2, uh, we're going to open up the Kayali dashboard. So once you open up, uh, click on the Kayali UI tab here, you're going to see uh, the Kayali uh, graph. So click on the graph here and select it's your in action. And uh, you can choose to display, you know, different data. I like traffic animation. I also like security. Uh, so it shows you like the live traffic comes through and it also shows you, you know, whether the traffic is mutual TLS. So that's one benefit the sidecar brings to you, right? You immediately gain access to all this data from the Kayali dashboard. The other thing we want to talk about is distributed tracing. Um, so we're going to go back to this terminal two and control C to get out of here. If I can control C correctly, let's see. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're going to copy this command over to uh, start uh, the JGA dashboard. Uh, so click on the JGA UI here. And, um, and uh, on the service drop down, click on Istio Ingress Gateway. So that would capture all the traffic, or you can click on Web API. So either way, it's going to capture all the traffic coming through the Web API service. And if you click on find trace, it's going to show you all the traces in, in all in for the last 20 traces. So for instance, that you can click on one of these and then you can drill into a little bit more detail about uh, this particular trace information, where the time are spent, uh, the duration, you know, and you can click on the text to find a little bit more information about uh, like the request size, response, uh, you know, upstream cluster. So pretty much everything you want to see is, uh, is here. You know, when things works, uh, this dashboard could be a little bit boring, but when things break, when you have like a arrow different than 200, it could be really, really helpful to help you troubleshooting issues. Um, the X request ID uh, is how, you know, we know these traces are belonging to the single request. So it's very important to um, help propagate these headers throughout your service, which may require a change to your service if your service are not automatically propagate these uh, B3 trace headers. 
The next dashboard we're going to look at is uh, the Grafana dashboard. So click on Terminal 2 here, and uh, we're going to Control C, get out of here, and uh, using dashboard Grafana command uh, to view the, the Grafana dashboard. Now we're going to select, uh, let's see, go back to the dashboard folder, uh, click on home. Okay, let me refresh here. Seems a little bit slow to me too. Okay, so if you click on is still folder here, um, you can see Istio service, ma uh, service dashboard. So it should show you all the services um, that we have. So all these data that's generated for web API, purchase history recommendation, it's all available for you uh, that you can see, you know, all the client data, server requests, client requests, uh, a successful rate, you know, whether the traffic is mutual TLS. Um, every single data is available for you. Uh, and it's, a, it's an application level data. So a lot of interesting data. So congratulations, uh, you have added the sample application to Istio and observed the metrics tracing and dashboard. Um, so these are the benefits by injecting that sidecar to your services and you are getting all these benefits. So if you click on the check, uh, you should be able to get a good result and progress to the next lab. Um, I would say let's take a few minutes break here before we continue. Uh, Ram, how is everybody doing? Yeah, I think that was that was much better. People are able to follow along. So okay, let's let's good. do that same pace for the next lab. But like yep. you said, uh, we'll do a, a few minute break. Uh, maybe you could pull up a, like a blank screen or something with the message that's saying that we'll be back in in five minutes, so that people that are streaming in can can stay up to date. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, yeah, let me create a new slide. All right, congratulations, you guys got in this far. So now we're going to talk about how to secure the services in your mesh. So let me uh, share my screen. So this is lab, let's see, lab four. We did two labs together. Um, we're going to talk about how do you incrementally add in services uh, to the mesh, um, which actually you already add that um, in the previous lab. But uh, you might remember you actually see Mutual TLS uh, security badge in your Kayali dashboard, right? That is true because it's your automatically config Mutual TLS for you. Um, however, that's a best effort um, that we don't guarantee it's Mutual TLS. So if Mutual TLS works, the traffic goes through. If Mutual TLS doesn't work, we will send plain text. Uh, so in order for you to enforce the traffic to be strict mutual TLS, you would have to apply a strict mutual TLS policy, either for your target service or for your namespace or for the entire mesh. So that's what we're going to do uh, in this lab. So we're going to enable mutual TLS and we're going to talk about how the workload key and certificates are distributed in Istio. And we're going to inspect the key and certificate for each of the service so that you can understand how mutual TLS is enforced by Istio proxy sidecar. With that, uh, we're going to jump into a demo on this lab. So you should see uh, this and click on the start button that would start uh, this particular lab, secure communication with Istio. So you should be already in the Istio basic directory so you can skip the prerequisite. The first thing we're going to do is check out what are the peer authentication policy 
in my Kubernetes cluster. So pre-authentication policy is the one that um, specified uh, what are the re what are the secure uh, strict mutual TLS policy in my Istio cluster? As you can see, I have nothing uh, specified. So by default, Istio allows uh, permissive mutual TLS to be used, which is what I was mentioning early. We will do a best effort on upgrade your connection to mutual TLS from that sidecar proxy, but if the traffic didn't go through, we will downgrade your plain text and still allow the communication to go through. So that's what permissive is for. So we're going to apply strict mutual TLS for the entire mesh. The reason I said it's entire mesh in this example is because I'm applying to the Istio system namespace. Uh, which is the root configuration namespace for my cluster. And I'm naming this pure authentication policy with default. Um, and I'm applying um, mutual TLS mode strict. So I'm deploying this default policy in my root namespace to um, the entire Istio mesh. As you can see, it's applied. You can also run the cube uh, get pure authentication policy. You should be able to see the policy uh, we just applied. Now let's see mutual TLS in action. Uh, to do that, we're going to deploy a sleep service in the default namespace. So the reason why we do that is um, in the default namespace, the sleep pod is one slash one. So it's just one sleep container without the sidecar. Now, if you look at the pods in the Istio in action namespace, if you recall, we also have a sleep container in there, but it's two slash two. So this means this has the Istio sidecar proxy injected uh, in the Istio in action namespace. So we're going to um, run a curl command to access Web API from the sleep in the default namespace. What do you think is going to happen? It's actually not allowed. Why? The reason is we apply the strict mutual TLS policy for entire mesh, which includes every single services in the mesh uh, that includes the Web API service. So when the sleep service in the default namespace trying to reach out to the web API service, which are in the mesh. So we're talking about a client outside of the mesh trying to reach a client in the mesh. It doesn't have the key and certificate to do mutual TLS uh, connection, which are why the connection is rejected. Now, what if you run the same command except that you're using a different namespace, the sleep in is still in action namespace. This time that it did succeed, right? Because that sleep container has the Istio proxy, it knows what to talk to, the keys and certificate to do establish the mutual TLS con connection and to do, um, to do the mutual TLS uh, communication with the web API service. If you go back to the Kayali dashboard, so let's generate some traffic, you should be able to see a little bit different. I want to point out that difference quickly for you because you probably wondering, I'm already seeing my security badge, right? So what's the difference? So now if you go to navigate the Kayali in the graph that we mentioned, um, so you can still display the security badge and traffic animation, right? So this is same as before, but one key difference here is if you click on, um, if you click on the, the secure um, button here, it does show mesh wide mutual TLS is enabled. So Kayali knows that we have mutual TLS enabled on uh, each of the service within the mesh. By the way, this is an enablement on the target service side. So let's 
dive a little bit deeper to understand how this works. With that, um, I'm going to exit out of the Kayali uh, dashboard command. So I have my terminal back. Um, now, if I do uh, Istio proxy config command, by the way, it's a super helpful uh, debugging command, allows you to look at uh, the Envoy configuration, uh, many of the Zika proxy configuration for each of your services. So if you check out the web API secret, um, you can see we have um, the default and the root CA secret uh, for the web API. The default secret um, contains uh, the, the public inf certificate information for the web API service. And you can analyze uh, the uh, the the secret the default secret a little bit more by analyzing like the issue right so it's issued by cluster local which is your local Kubernetes cluster and uh, you can also check if the public certificate is valid for for the web API uh, container you can see it, since this was just generated so it's actually only valid for a day by the way don't you find that interesting what if you know after the day you know how is this going to stay valid right so it still actually automatically handles certificate rotation for you before it's expiring so we know we constantly check when it's expiring and we stage the certification rotation for you and make sure it automatically renew the certificate in the same way that you are getting the initial key and search signed and we're using the same way to renew the search for you now let's um, validate the identity of the client certs and check if it's uh, valid. Um, so you can grab the subject alternative name, uh, which uh, you will see the specific ID for this particular service. Um, so you should, uh, let's try and spend a little bit of time to understand the specific ID, right? So where does the cluster.local come from? And uh, this is namespace, this is the Istio in action, which is your namespace, and service account is web API, right? So, so if you go to the Istio config map uh, during installation of Istio, um, by default, we config a trust domain for you, which is part of your spiffy ID. So that trust domain by default is cluster.local uh, come with the default profile. You can choose to overwrite that if you want um, through Istio operator.yaml. Uh, so that's how your uh, spiffy ID uh, is built. And the other thing I want you to check is the service account. We talked about this earlier, but in case you don't remember, the web API deployment was using this particular service account we created, which is also used in the Spiffy ID for this particular service. Now, the next question I want you to think through is how does the web API service obtain the necessary key and certificates. Um, so remember early we reviewed um, the injected uh, Istio proxy container for the web API pod, which you can do it by, um, you know, find out the pod and you can always do a get pod on this web API. And, uh, you know, you can do it um, dash o yaml, right? So we did that together when we examined the init container, the sidecar proxy container. Um, there was a bunch of volume that are mounted to the Istio proxy container. Um, so what are these volumes, right? And there's an Istio token that we reviewed together too, right? It's on the right side here too. So what are these things um, 
like the CA certs and the history of token, what are the purpose of these? So these are mounted to the Istio sidecar container um, so that when the sidecar container starts, the Istio agent, which also called pilot agent, remember you run the command of pilot agent to check out how it configs the IP tables. So the pilot agent would create the private key for the web API service and then send the certificate signing request to Istio certificate authority, which by the way is the Istio D control plane, uh, which are installed in our cluster on the Istio system namespace um, called Istio D. So Istio Daemon, that's what it uh, stands for. So it sends the certificate signing request and using the Istio token and the web API um, service, uh, service account token as the credential to talk to Istio D and the Istio, uh, Istio agent sends the certificate um, back. So the Istio D gets the certificates back from the Istio D and then sends the, sends the private key to the Envoy proxy through the Envoy SDS API. So that all this magic happens in the sidecar proxy um, without you actually needing to do anything. Um, the only thing you need is just uh, get the sidecar injected, right? And we talk about the expiration of 24 hours. Um, the next question you may be wondering is how is mutual TS strictly enforced, right? So uh, this is something actually, you know, I find really interesting. So when you do a proxy config on your web API um, deployment, um, you, you get to see all the configuration. But one thing interesting is uh, before you have strict mutual TS enabled, you are actually seeing a lot of the times that we allow raw buffer to your services in the mesh. Um, but once we have mutual TS enabled, the raw buffer we are allowing actually got reduced. Um, we're still allowing raw buffer for services not in the mesh, but for services in the mesh, uh, we are no longer allow raw buffer. So we no longer allow plain text in that sense. That's how we make sure the traffic are mutual TRS um, and only mutual TRS are allowed. The other question I want you to start think about is, you know, there's so much data, right? Every time I do an Envoy proxy config, it's just so much data, it's so hard to read and interpret. Um, how can I config my Istio to only listen to um, the stuff I care about? How can I, you know, selectively config what my Istio proxy sidecar can see? So uh, in fact, uh, in 30 minutes or so, I think Ram is actually going to talk about how, what's the best practice to deploy Istio in production? And he's going to cover export to and sidecar resources. We also plan to cover discovery selector in one of our future workshop. So stay tuned. Um, these are available in Istio, but we're not going to cover in this lab. So congratulations, guys. You have enabled strict mutual TRS policy for all the services in your entire mesh. And the next, we're going to explore uh, controlling traffic and uh, listed services. So click on the check button, which will load on uh, the next challenging for you. And uh, you can click on start to get to the next uh, lab. How's everybody doing? Uh, we have a couple of thumbs ups, right? <clears throat> yeah, uh, I think you can proceed, Nguyen. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I think we only have uh, 17, 20 minutes. So I want to make sure uh, this lab is a little bit long. I have to say the, the, the control traffic lab. So essentially we're going to introduce a new version of one of our services. And we're going to teach you how do you dock launch the service? How do you do canary based routing? How do you add resilience to your service? How do you interact with external service? 
So we may not be able to get everything, but um, the lab environment will be available for you throughout the day. So feel free to play with them. So in this lab, in addition to gateway and virtual service, we're going to talk about virtual service um, to not bind to a gateway. So this is interesting. You can config route rule uh, without a gateway, right? Because not every single of your services would be connected to the ingress gateway directly. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to also config uh, subsets and policies uh, for your destination. So destination rule are essential when you have multiple versions of your services, you're gonna to need to config, you know, how are you, you going to shift your traffic? What are the subsets of your services? Uh, service entry allows you to access external services by having services entry um, in our Istio system, in our Istio service mesh register, the Istio knows the external service and how to uh, allow you to connect to them. So the first lab we're going to, as part of lab five, first portion, we're going to do a dark launch of purchase history version two. Then we're going to do a canary test to route 20% of the traffic to version two of purchase history. Then we're going to control the outbound service by introducing purchase history version three. Um, and we are going to configure Istio to only allow registered service um, to go to the external service. So with that, we're going to jump to lab five. Uh, we do have a bonus lab, uh, but unlikely we will have time to cover. You can do them on your own. Uh, it's not going to be uh, required for the certification. So make sure you are in the Istio basic directory, which I am. And let's check out the purchase history version two. As you can see, I actually built this service myself uh, called version two. It's a forked version based on um, the Nick Jackson's fake service. The only reason I built this version two is I want to introduce uh, external service into my web, um, into my purchase history service. So it would query uh, this external service and get a response that I can't really read, but it is essentially, you know, gets a different response every time. Um, yeah, it's just a deployment here. Um, and uh, so we talk about destination rule. Um, so one thing we're going to do is um, config a dark launch um, by route all of the traffic to version one, right? So wait uh, 100, we can fig all the traffic to version one. Uh, we also have a destination rule because in our virtual service, we specify subset V1. So in destination rule, we define how the, ver what is V1, what is V2 subsets? It's by a label selector um, to select on the deployments of version v1 and version v2. So if you remember our deployment uh, label here, right, we did label uh, um, the selector match label. Let's go ahead, apply this virtual service and uh, destination rule to our environment. So now we have configured uh, Istio to send 100% traffic to version one. Now we can introduce version two. By the way, you really want to apply this first before you introduce version two, because the moment you apply version two, uh, Kubernetes by default is going to run Robin, the traffic between version one and version two before you actually had a chance to test the version two. So now we deploy version two into our environment. Uh, if you do a get pads on the Istio in action namespace, you can see both of one and two are running. Um, let's take a look at the logs of version two of purchase history. Um, there's actually an error here. Um, unable to connect to the external service. 
um, connection refuse. So this is interesting. Why do we get this arrow? Um, okay, let's generate some load first, right? So uh, let's generate some load, just making sure our traffic are still good. As you can see, I mean, we can fix 100% traffic to version one. So even though version two was not good, you know, we're still fine because, you know, we're not breaking anybody down. So now let's think through why are we having this behavior, right? Why is this guy trying to reach out to external service and it's got the connection refused? Remember I mentioned earlier, right? When the init container runs, the sidecar proxy and the, the web API or purchase history runs in parallel as the sidecar proxy. So this poses a problem. What if the sidecar proxy needs to reach out to any external service, but it doesn't have network connect? What if the purchase history, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. What if the purchase history container needs to reach out to the JSON placeholder service, which is external, before the Envoy sidecar proxy is ready, right? It's, it can't. That's essentially the problem we run into. Luckily, in Istio, there is a configuration where you can hold the application container until the proxy starts. Um, so let's make sure we in, include that configuration. Um, to do that, you add an annotation to, uh, to your deployment um, like this. And uh, let's go ahead and deploy this. And finger cross is going to fix it for us. Um, okay, so let's check out the logs uh, for this part. Um, depends on where we are. Okay, it's actually picked up. Uh, no, uh, it actually takes a little bit of time. So sometimes the logs does take a little bit of time because it takes time to start the container. Um, so let's try it again. Yep, so now you can see uh, the logs did pick up the, the new one, which was just started 18 seconds ago. You can see we're able to connect. So, th and that's all because we can fix the whole application until your proxy starts. So this is highly, required if your container, your service requires external connectivity outside of your Kubernetes cluster, make sure you config this because uh, I actually stumped on this and took me a while to solve this problem myself. Um, all right, so let's test version two of purchase history, right? Um, as you can see, we were able to test it uh, successfully by exact into the container and do a local host. And so this is like the most uh, simple testing. Um, now we want to do, you know, once we test a little bit, we want to do a header-based routing, right? Because, you know, we don't want to just test within our container. We want to test through, you know, some other service. So to do header-based routing, remember we talk about route rule, right? So you config that in virtual service. You do a header-based matching. Uh, when the user is JSON, by the way, it's capital J, you route the destination to version two. And for any other traffic, you continue to route to version one. So let's go ahead and apply this. And uh, let's do a testing. So what we are doing is user JSON. Hmm, why is it still going to version one? All right, this is because uh, in the route rule, we had exact JSON and we were using a lowercase j uh, in the query. So let's fix that. So uh, if you use uh, user JSON, finger crossed, <laughs> uppercase j, uh, da -da, it does return purchase history version two exactly as we told Istio to do, right? So this is great. Uh, we were able to test it. Um, let's do canary base to um, put 20% traffic to version two. So uh, go back to our virtual, his, uh, virtual service and change version one to be weight 80 and version two to be 820 so that we can achieve 20% traffic. Let's go ahead and apply this virtual service. Now, if we do a loop of accessing our um, web API service, 
and graph the purchase history, you can see out of 20, we got exactly four. So that's the 20%. So let's continue this trend to shift more stuff to version two. We're going to shift 50% uh, this time and apply this configuration. And uh, let's do a loop. And uh, as you can see, it's about 50%. Um, not going to count, but uh, it's nice that with Istio, you can config a simple virtual service. And uh, without needing to restart anything, you were able to shift traffic exactly what you want it to be. So that's the power of what Istio brings to control traffic. Um, the next thing we're going to do is shift the, all the traffic to version two. So let's apply that and uh, run this loop again. As you can see, every single traffic is version two now. So very nice. Um, now we're going to teach you how to control inbound traffic. Uh, I'm sorry, how to control outbound traffic. Um, by default, it still allows all the outbound traffic to go through. Um, this is the by, you know, I'm just double checking the outbound policy. We don't have any outbound policy. So default is allow any. Um, to config Istio to only allow registry only, let's go ahead and uh, install this command by setting outbound traffic to be registry only. As you can see, our configuration are updated. Um, by the way, this configuration does take a little bit of while for Istio to pick up. The main reason is um, this configuration is updated in a config map. And uh, it does take a while from that config map uh, for Istio to recognize and then push down to the Envoy sidecar proxy. So now if we send the traffic to the web API service, let's see how it goes. Yeah, so it still goes um, goes because I said it's going to take a while. So um, yeah, now you can see now it fails now. Um, so the Envoy proxy has been refreshed with registry only. So it's not going to allow purchase history to go through because it reaches out to the external service that it's not allowed to access. Uh, it's not registered to uh, access. So if you do a pod uh, log command, uh, you can actually see that uh, we actually retry for you. Remember we talked about but in Istio, you automatically get retry twice. So this is exactly why you are getting attempt to count three, uh, because we retry for you. So let's go ahead and fix hey, Lynn, this. Um, we have about four minutes left. Okay. I'll run through this. Uh, let's go ahead and fix this. Uh, to fix this is apply a service entry command, uh, to a resource by importing this external services into the mesh. Now, once we import this, you should finger cross to access. Yep, that, it did work. So that's, a, that's the nice thing, right? You have the precise control into, you know, what external services are allowed. So this is all the control traffic section. Um, I'm going to go through the rest of my slides because some of you might be interested in the badge program. So we do have this foundation badge I talked to you through. So we really appreciate you guys provide a feedback to our survey and test. Uh, could one of you, Ram or Will, maybe send this out? So by completing the test uh, and passing 80%, you will be able to get this foundation for Istio batch or uh, certified by Solo. And uh, please give us the feedback through the survey. Um, and uh, we also have the rest of us. Uh, uh, talks from the solo team, make sure you attend uh, like Ram's workshop if you like this workshop. Uh, and, uh, you know, we also have a talk about designing service mesh global scale at SAP. That's really interesting. And also a multi-cluster workshop. And Christian is also talking about zero downtime. So don't miss any of our talks. And, uh, you know, visit us at the booth to um, we have in-person booths and virtual booths, so please engage with the solo team. That's all I have. All right, thank you, Lynn.
Thank you so much, uh, Ram and Will and Eric. I appreciate you guys' support and thanks everyone for attending and joining us for the workshop. Right, we so. do have a lot of future workshops at solo.io. If you go to our event page, uh, we do run these type of workshops very frequently on a monthly basis. So feel free to join us there too. Yeah, just to kind of elaborate on that. I mean, there's, we covered a lot of content in this like very short amount of time. So if you're interested in this, but you want to kind of go, go at it at a much more um, slower pace, then yeah, go to solo.io look for the events section, and then you can see where we run this workshop, the workshop that I'm gonna run next, which is a slightly more advanced deploying Istio into production. Um, and we also have you know, workshops around multi-cluster meshes, um, API gateways, envoys, et cetera. Okay, so I think at 11.10 is actually the next workshop, which I will be running. Uh, let me give me a couple of minutes to kind of swap computers and then uh, we'll get started. Okay, great. Thanks, everyone. Have fun learning. <laughs>